Here's a story for you. Once upon a time, there was a middle-aged woman who lived in the coal fields of Appalachia. It was almost summertime, not quite the solstice, but it then got to 97 degrees with 62% humidity. And guess what happened? Her air conditioning went out. That, my friends, is a true story. I am author Gwen Elise Clayton, and every Tuesday, I bring you news, features, and commentary about issues that improve the quality of life in our communities. Today, we're talking about storytellers of Appalachia. I moved to Ashland, Kentucky in November 2021. Actually, I moved to Russell, Kentucky in November 2021. January 1st of 2022, my husband and I passed papers and became proud homeowners of this glorious house in Ashland, Kentucky. This part of the country has been home to the Shawnee. It was settled by Scots-Irish immigrants who brought their slaves with them and many of the people in the enslaved community found their way to the Ohio River through the Underground Railroad. This area is also the home to Jesse Stewart, who is a very famous poet and author. And you may especially know it recently as the birthplace of Naomi and Winona Judd. And Naomi just passed away last month. Storytelling in this neck of the woods has always been a deep part of Appalachian culture and history with the coal mines, the steel plants, and we even have oil refineries out here. There's just, there's been a lot of hard luck and hard work and long lost love. Jesse Stewart is a poet, short story writer, essayist, and novelist who was born in Greenup County in 1906. According to the Carnegie Center for Literacy and Learning, Jesse Stewart was born August 8, 1906 in Greenup County, Kentucky, and died February 17, 1984 in Ironton, Ohio. He is buried at the Plum Grove Cemetery near W Hollow, also known as Hidden Hollow, and right across from the Plum Grove Baptist Church. Naomi Judd was born in 1946 in Ashland, Kentucky. She and her daughter Winona recorded their first album in 1983. Hailing from the Appalachian foothills of Ashland, Kentucky, mother and daughter duo The Judds were first discovered by RCA label head Joe Galanti in 1983 after landing a spot on WSM TV's The Ralph Emery Show. For the rest of the 1980s, each single from The Judge released by RCA went to the Billboard Top 10 with 14 hits going all the way to number one. Elmi released her memoir, River of Time, My Descent into Depression and How I Emerged with Hope. Unfortunately, Naomi Judd lost her battle to depression. She died by suicide on April 30th, 2022. There is a display about her and her daughter at the Highlands Museum and History Center on Winchester Boulevard in Ashland, Kentucky. Another famous Greenup County singer was Bill Williams. He was a blues singer with lots of folk and country music intermixed. His most popular hit was Low and Lonesome, which was recorded in 1970 on Blue Goose Records. Storytelling continues its vibrant tradition today as the Storytellers of Appalachia Book Club meets on the second Thursday of each month at 6 p.m. at Conquest Books at 323 15th Street in downtown Ashland, Kentucky. We just started in June with another Appalachia by Nima Avashia. I started the book club and I picked that book for, for our for June because the author is going to be coming to Conquest on a book tour, book signing tour on June 25th. 
from 1 to 3 p.m. So I wanted to make sure people got in and read her book before, uh, or at least got to know about her a little bit before she came to town. So I'm really excited about meeting her. I absolutely loved that book. Some of the local authors we'll be featuring are Raymond Jean Newsom, Edwin Talmadge Callahan, Stephen Bias, Rebecca Hemlock, and of course me, Gwen Elise Clayton. Even though if you get my books, it says I live in Fort Wayne, I've moved to Kentucky since then. And my, I have two books out, Fermata Sellers and Zinfandel's Grimoire. And they are set, these two books are set in California, but my third book will be set in Canova, West Virginia, just right across the Big Sandy River from Kentucky. Our book for July is going to be Jebera by Thomas Deering. And this is going to be, this is kind of a sci-fi novel, I think, judging by the cover. And uh, Gabby Sullivan has a great life, a career with the National Park Service in Washington, D.C., and a loving boyfriend. When four strangers and an eccentric billionaire find her at the Washington Monument, Gabby is plunged into a world of magic, mayhem, and terrifying prophetic visions. Now, speaking of terrifying prophetic visions or anything terrifying, if you are a fan of Appalachian storytelling. You probably have heard of the podcast Old Gods of Appalachia. And I adore this podcast. It is such good storytelling. I absolutely love the writing. Steve Shell does this fabulous job narrating it. And they have all this different, all these different people as voice talent who really between the writing and the speaking and the sound effects and the music, listeners are really transported into this fictional setting of Barlow, Kentucky. And there's, uh, oh, what was it? Tourniquet, West Virginia. I thought that is so cool. So I'm really excited about it. And the local connection to this is... We have a coffee roasting company in Grayson, Kentucky called Goose Bridal Coffee Roasters. And as a fundraiser for the Old Gods of Appalachia podcast, they created this Barrow and Locks Old Number 7 Dark Roast. So, of course, I had to get some. Of course, I did. So, I tried it out and uh, let me show you how what I thought about it. Always start with cold filtered tap water and I boil it in my little stove top coffee maker. We got the, it's the French press grind. You can see it's a medium brown not super dark not super light and it's kind of coarse so I'm going to pour the water into my French press and add a quarter cup of ground put the plunger on and wait six minutes Okay, it's been six minutes. Let's take a look at it. I don't stir my coffee in the French press. I don't know if other people do. I don't, but that's the color. Pour the plunger down slowly. Beautiful crema on top. Can you see that crema? It's going to come apart as soon as I lift the plunger up, but that is what makes a good cup of coffee in a French press. Twist it to the open part and 
pour it in. This is my little bistro mug from Fiesta Wear, which is made in West Virginia. And that's the color. I always add a bunch of cream and sugar in my coffee. So I t put two teaspoons of sugar and enough cream to make it, oh, that color. I'm definitely tasting the smoky flavor that's coming out. Storytelling, why is storytelling so important? That's my comment question to you. I really love to escape into a good story, whether it's music or a book with, or just a good YouTube video, good movie or something like that. I want to escape. And I especially love the written word because I just have this whole fascination with language. And I started the book club because I really wanted to geek out with other like-minded folks. And I wanted to help support local authors. We always read local authors at the Storytellers of Appalachia Book Club. It's all about supporting local authors and uh, being local readers reading local authors it's it's an important way to support the literary arts and another thing about reading and i especially feel this way reading books like another appalachia by nima avashia uh nima is she's a lesbian and she is from uh, her parent well she was born in west virginia but her parents are from india so here she grew up as this Desi queer girl, although she didn't know she was queer when she was growing up, but it was just such an interesting perspective and I loved her book. It was so lyric and uh, sing-songy and beautiful and her writing was outstanding. I just loved it. Not as much as I love the old gods about Appalachia though. But anyhow, so I hope to see you at my book club. Our next meeting is July 14th. Again, it's at 6 p.m. at Conquest Books, 323 15th Street in Ashland. Thank you all so much for watching today. I am your host, Gwen Elise Clayton. I drop videos every Tuesday evening. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it interesting or entertaining and be sure to subscribe to the River Vine YouTube channel if you want to know more about issues that improve our quality of life in our communities. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.